Hello everybody, welcome to our second development update for the Arctic game on Rec Room. So we got a couple here uh, last time, so not just four this time. Yeah, it was four, right? It was four or three last time, boys. We okay. So well, we got a lot oh, more yeah. here, obviously. So down the line, I'm Space Killer 555, one of the head producers. Down the line here, we got... We have a, my name is uh, Brendan. I'm an assistant producer. I'm a Kian. I'm the historical consultant. I am Silent. I am an assistant producer. I am Warship fan. Most of y'all probably know me by now, and I am a historical consultant. Not that voice, that crazy voice guy. Who co-builds with this project? Well, you're still a producer, regardless. <laughs> There's no producer doesn't have a rank here. It's just building. It's just building. Anyways, we got quite a few things we're gonna have on topic here. Um, so we got a lot of things such as like how we do some research. Are we gonna use Rec Room Studio? Some of the voice actors. Some of our con uh, controversial topics like the bridge. Then we got a lot of questions about that, uh, including some of our stuff like the current progress, if we have any challenges or suspected changes or challenges to, to occur. Starting with our ship research here. So we got a lot of things, a lot of when it comes to ship, um, the ship itself of Arctic and when it comes to research. Uh, Brendan here, who has studied a lot of the Arctic and who jo recently joined our progress here. So if you want to talk about a little bit of that, Yes, so um, a lot of the Collins liners, especially the Arctic, is, um, well, not purposely, but they are not represented correctly the way that they originally were. Part of the fact is it's hard to find a lot of information about these ships, but I've taken it upon myself to heavily indulge in old newspapers, so much so that I've come across a lot of new information pertaining to the various Collins liners like specifics about decorations, um, dining room locations, crazy, like incredible stuff. And even to that, we were able to find, well, not an actual photograph, but a drawing taken from a photograph of the Arctic afloat. So this piece will be really key in making the Arctic as she was when she sank. If you've ever looked at lithographs of the Collins liners, they're not exactly accurate. No. So, What's a we, lithograph? With all this new information, we plan on building the most accurate Arctic up to date and the greatest Arctic up to date. Sounds good. <laughs> I what hope the heck so. Is a lithograph. Yeah. A lithograph is pretty much an etching that is printed off, isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm imagine you're a lithograph. Okay. A lot of us had had our own research of the Arctic. I mean, son, you're probably the one that has the least amount of the Arctic. But <laughs> if we'll get none to that. at all. He's he does have some reason to be here. Don't get me wrong, you do, okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't, don't insult it. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm not stupid, I think. You at least know what caused <laughs> no, the ship collision, very... right? Uh, another ship. <laughs> See, so he knows a little bit, though. <laughs> Check qualification. <laughs> I hope I knew that. So, some of the things um, about the Arctic is like some of the places we don't have any information on. So we have, yeah, we got a few sketches, yes. We have a few, we call it uh, testimonies, not really, but stories of passengers or crew that can't ex explain some of the interiors. So one of these examples is the cargo room to the boiler room. We know ships have shear, but the boiler room people or the crew down there did not know that the ship actually took a collision. Um, so we had to figure out, okay, how does the water not get there immediately? So we can design a few things based off of other ship designs kind of the era about the uh, the finding about the arctic's overhaul on the last mm. voyage which really is sad because we don't know what the ship will actually look like no it may never know it's like we're blabbering because we don't know certain areas of the ship but okay. we use so other ship now... diagrams though like we look yeah we do look like the we do like the atlantic we do look at the uh the baltic yeah they, they are sister ships they have their differences a little bit, but we at least get an idea like, oh, this is how they did it. So we can't get an idea how how they do it. But same thing as like other ships, just like how why were certain areas the way how they designed. Yeah. It's like um, it's like um, when we were doing this room that we're actually in right now. How these little areas at the top have these grated things, these like that look like vent entrances on the sketching, and how we lined it up with. An actual vent on the roof, and thought it could possibly work as an offshooting pipe. Mm -hmm. Just little things like that that you find out as you're building things. Obviously, we'll never know because we don't know 
how the functions of the ship work, but at least we get an idea of how things could have worked when you place it all together. It's a bit like a big jigsaw puzzle. Mm -hmm. All right, Silent, this is time for you not to be quiet anymore. So we're going to uh, oh, use a rec room studio. So we already kind of thought oh. about, you know, the use of <laughs> life jackets. Life jackets. Yeah, life, life, like, yeah, life jackets. Sorry, life jackets. Yeah, the float. Uh, the float not even thing. life jackets. It's flotation device, right? Mm -hmm, it's like much. an accordion. I yeah, I swear in reading stuff about the Arctic and Survivor accounts, the Collins liners were fitted with this cylindric sh tube. That, that's that what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Yeah, flotation oh, device. Yeah, that's what we're calling it for now because it, it's a okay. It's a, a floating ring essentially. All right. Anyways, uh, Breaking Studio. So those the lot of light the light okay. rings, as well as maybe probably some particle effects and all that. That'll be your segment here. So yeah. So I was brought on to basically help with a lot of like the Rec Room Studio stuff or just general more technical circuits, I guess. Um, like say water physics, swimming stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And especially Rec Room Studio is very useful for lots of repeating things. So say having all these, you know, flotation devices, it's really easy with Rec Room Studio to just clone them because they don't cost any ink. Um, not that you guys need to worry about that. <laughs> um, but they can also do some like special things that you wouldn't be able to do with just normal rec room objects without a lot of um, circuits and complexity. Um, I also help with probably some particle effects, um, some more like lighting stuff. Like I could probably set up a skybox, possibly, mm -hmm. depending if you need one. Um, if you have like the smoke from the stacks, um, I can do that. Uh, but yeah, mm. mostly brought on for more technical um, aspects. Yeah. But yeah, like yeah. it would be nice to have some natural smoke that's not the, the traditional yeah. rec cream smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah Which looks what you've nothing like done. coal smoke. I'll make that no, point it's like the white, the white tint and the black, and it's just not right. <laughs> so when it comes to voice lines that you're going to hear in the, in the Arctic, is one, it's going to kind of give you an idea how the chain of command might work or how the ship was commanded during like during like say the collision maybe some lifeboat la uh, launchings. But a lot of these are also going to be used to kind of cue you into what to do because this will be our first game where it's going to be in interactive to what things are going to be doing. So for example, some of our things that are going to be required is uh, shoving off the anchors with the chains. Some it's going to be requiring as in to use the pumps, the, the manual pumps, not the steam pumps, but the manual pumps. And these are actually going to affect the game in terms of the sinking. It won't affect it entirely all in terms of how it goes down, but it will give you time to kind of prep for other things, such as making the raft, or doing other things, or getting the other two lifeboats ready. Now, for example, for those who know about the Arctic, they did make a raft. They had to use the yards up on deck to make the, the foundation of the said raft. So, do we expect normal players to know how to untie rigging, lower rigging, take down the yards step by step no i don't think anyone does i don't think most people know how to take down the yard so some of these voice lines are going to be kind of a a guide how to do it so you'll once you do one thing you will give you the next operation uh, the next part of the operation to do certain certain stuff this could also involve maybe the cannon but Ooh. cannons are pretty straightforward we'll add it if you need to <laughs> but it's fairly simple charge in ram it prime it fire and then you, then from that point on, you go on from there. I guess we can talk about how many people we have. I mean, we have a lot of people in terms of voice actors right now. We have at least, I think, 13, 13 actors right now. Um, Epic. Quite a bit. And we're still looking for more. We're still looking for French voice actors and British voice actors. Hey, voice, you're one of them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for the Cambria. I'm sure half of the no names will be introduced as voice, act voice actors at some point. Yeah. So, as some people don't know, he does have his own group entirely. All the no names, so I do not. I'm just kind of standalone. <laughs> almost, you almost, you you, you get in there. Yeah. There's plans. Kidding. What me joining the no names? 
<laughs> well, no, your own thing. Your own little Fandango. Mm. All right. For sure, are. I'm also I'm voice acting, right? <laughs> yeah, For yeah. Sure you're you're doing some of the crew because yeah. at that age, I mean, a lot of young guys were, mm. uh, what were they called? I mean, when it comes to ship combat, there was a uh, powder monkeys. Like those were those were young young kids. Like even sometimes. Hey, about, I mean, luckily now, I'm, my voice is a lot deeper than when I first met you. Mm. Um, but yeah. Hello. <laughs> I mean, we don't have any applications, so if anyone's going, oh, we don't want to apply for a voice actor, we don't actually actively have a, a application thing yet. So we're going to wait till we have to get kind of closer to the due date of the game until we start kind of going, okay, we need to start looking for people. I mean, yeah, there's a few times where we might get somebody and such. Oh, man's texting. What is it? Okay. Mysterious. <laughs> so we got a topic called um, pretty much controversial topics so such as the bridge some people go where is the bridge based off some already uh, pic videos of it so about said bridge um there isn't <laughs> it just doesn't exist when we we're trying to figure out what's on the ship and what's not at least mm -hmm. most of the illustrations of the ship are external therefore yeah, yeah. it makes sense when you don't see a bridge it's like hmm. so that's the first thing yes the any any lithograph or even depiction of the arctic you will not see a bridge there is no bridge to be seen it's always what you'd see a uh, what's called a paddle box platform it's where the officer would stand on either side of the paddle box yeah it's a little bit annoying to go on one side you have to go down go back on the superstructure go over there and then back on the other one yes but bridges did exist they started existing definitely for the great eastern after a few years but there were ships at around this time that did have bridges that's where the name came from they're but, also in the Great Britain. Yep. But there is a raised superstructure on the offside of the ship that you can see in some lithographs. And most times of the ship, there was no hydraulics. It was all done by mechanic... Human mechanics, I could just say. And having to have Boats a... And pulleys. Yes. And having pulleys all the way at the front, and all the way to over... And somehow linking it all the way to the back side of the ship, and down, is not going to be great. So right above the rudder, which is usually how it was back then, and that's where the wheelhouse would be, usually on these ships. And that raised structure is seen pretty awful like a wheelhouse, because they're normally in a small, enclosed room called a wheelhouse. Yes, yes, yes. Because the Babar situation, when we were trying to think about it, it was like, it wouldn't make sense. It would be kind of weird to have a crew member kind of walk in the middle of a Babar and go, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, and just go excuse into, me, and go, okay. goes into, a, into a wheelhouse room. So, Pardon me. So we're not like as of right now. Like, we're not saying we're, we're doubting a Babar, okay? But as of right now, there is nothing stating like there's nothing saying like there is no Babar. It's not saying anything about uh, having a Babar. If that's just what another saying. comment before we, uh, you know, do it. There was the whole like the bell system to the engine room from the paddle box to the mm -hmm. the platform engine room, but there was not. It didn't go to the wheelhouse. They still relied on like people on deck to shout the orders and play telephone. That actually was a thing. Actually, there was bells involved. There was a. Uh, it's actually very simple, and I don't know much about it. It's, it's one pull cord for a single bell in the wheelhouse. And the only thing I got so far, this comes from the Atlantic. I'm pretty sure it's from a, a British. I think it was a. Uh, it comes from an old book. I think it was published in 1909 or 1908. I'm not sure if he was a crew member or something, but he he gets to got on board of the Atlantic, one of the, the sister of ships, and he kind of described a couple of things. And one of the things was in the wheelhouse, he actually had a a plaque of some sort. It was he named it something, but it was a picture that showed a bell and two bells, and it would remain uh, remain as one means starboard, one means port. And when he hears these bells, it would correspond to that order. That's the only far as we got of when it comes to turning. It'd be a simple bell, just like the engine room, you'd pull. And you just ring one bell, or you can do two for the other side. And that's all the specifics I know of, essentially. Like, what, how, do you, how do you describe, like, one-third rudder? Or how do you do, like, hard... Like, hard, like obviously, we know the hard to whatever it is. But the, the smaller commands. That might be based off of, um, of voices, probably. But I think, urgently, I think that bell is there to, you know, and you go, oh, we need a ding turn. Yes. Right there. Got to drop my phone there. <laughs> so a lot of the information about the like locations of the rooms and specific functions on board the Collins liners 
is lost. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of misconceptions, specifically the fact that there actually was a wheelhouse in the stern of the ship. And it was in this wheelhouse where if you even do look at lithographs of the Collins Liners, you can see a raised roof where the helmsman would stand on and be able to see out over the deck. It is around this area that is believed to be where the smoking room was. The saloon. So this room we're in right here, this is the Grand Saloon. That's what they say in the Illustrated London News. This is would be pretty much the biggest room in area of the ship. And they don't make a really good understanding of the layout. They kind of make it seem like the ladies' room is a separate room and it's like hidden-ish. But that's not the case because this uh, saloon right here, the Grand Saloon, would have extended all the way to the stern, right up to the stern of the ship. And the, the, the ladies' saloon would actually have been forward of the Grand Saloon, a separate space. But this is the kicker. It's not just for ladies. Men would retire into it as well. There are accounts of people on the Arctic who, after dinner, say they retire to the ladies' saloon. Even the captain, I think he had a speech in there once before, or made like a sermon or something. And if you were to consider this, you would have the lounge, the grand saloon at the stern, and the ladies room in front of it, which then would leave the dining saloon to be in f forward. Which, in the case, a lot of the articles describe the grand saloon and the um, the dining saloon to be right next to each other and to be separated by a pantry. Yeah, that's true, but that's not entirely true because it was also separated by an entire engine room and boiler room. So these these are just some of the facts that get really lost. And that is actually the layout of the Arctic and how it would have been original as built. Mm -hmm. I will say like there is a lot more than just that that does kind of describe a lot of this stuff. And oh, yeah. unfortunately, this is not a documentary for the Arctic. We will have a, a lot more updates about of the Arctic as time goes on and why we do certain things. Perhaps we might do a live stream and maybe have like a huge two hour long one like we did last time. Maybe. We'll see. But, not this time. but there's a lot. Yeah. No, I was, say, I was saying yes to the two hour oh. live stream. Yeah. That was fun. That was great. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. A lot of nothing wrong. Yeah. All right, let's um... see. So when it comes to ship systems, we can elaborate it on like how the wheelhouse works. So like, by word of mouth and certain small, detailed stuff, but stuff like we know there is a bell pull. They say a lot of what's called bell pulls, or bell signals, is what it also is referred to as. If you look at it today, you'll just find a bunch of bell signals in terms of time, not this type of system. There is another thing that's called a bell boat, which is not the same as what we're doing here. It's kind of similar, but not exactly. Bell boats is where you have gongs and jingles when it comes to those bells. Um, this one's not in that particular. So the engine room for these type, this type of ship would have a bunch of cords with handles, and each handle would have, have a mark, whether it might say stop, half, full, and there's one that as you saw is called hook on. I have no idea what that means, but regardless, you would pull these cords, I'm assuming they're both on both sides up uh, abaft of the paddle box and you would find. And it would ring a bell and flip a card just like you would have in these cabins, which would be a, a, a um, annunciator, I think what it's called where you pull and you get surface from a crew member or a, a waiter. It's almost just like that, but with the engine room, you'd pull a cord, it rings a bell and it would flip a card to what that order was. Almost like a weird not lit up telegraph like you'd see on Titanic. They have those uh, light up, lit up indicators. But imagine those, but just as a bell and just as a card. Flipping around, I would tell you what it is. Um, I'll tell you right now, when I found out that on that book, oh, I was so happy <laughs> because I've been <laughs> searching and searching and searching for it. That's probably as much searching I've done for a while. Might as well all my work in school, but like, oh. The holy art Bible. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was when it first came out of was that book on the, the C. Sean Brayson. They keep saying pull bells, but it's like, what are pull bells? I know they're not telegraphs. And now I find out they're not bell boats. So it's like, it has to be something. 
and eventually I found out on a book, I think it was in, published in 1909, or there was another one that was published in 1800, no, not the one was saying, 18, <laughs> yeah, very early, no, um, I think it was the one in 1904 and uh, 1905 is when it published when they took all this information, is when they put that in there, but I don't know where exactly the original source comes from, but it's in that book, and I'll have to probably link in the description if I find it. But anyways, um, AI systems, I mean, we kind of talked about enunciated, which is pretty cool. Um, the ventilation was kind of interesting there, how the, we kind of found out that which is kind of unique. Where the vent outside it is, we don't know because we're having to replace a bunch of stuff. And we're getting to a point, we're not going to say it yet in this video, but towards the end of it, what we're going to do with the architect. <laughs> but anyways... <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> nice. Um, so, current progress. So, we got a lot of things going on now. So, Plenty. so when, when it comes to saying that, a lot of you are probably going, is it almost done? Is it almost done? So, it's I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to re-illustrate on the Arctic. This is a ship that has not been touched for a long, long time. And it was not very well documented. There was not even a formal testimony after the sinking. There was a bunch of stories, and they were published of survivors from new newspaper articles where a lot of that information comes from. But there was no formal testimony like Titanic, where everyone's got down in terms of survival, uh, just that were in terms of survivors, and actually explaining in detail, in very, yeah, just very, very detailed, very subtle details. There was and none of that. Despite the fact there actually are people from, like, months after the arctic who are making statements in newspapers saying mm -hmm. like one of the engineers was like why aren't we having an inquiry into this and they post this it's in like i think the new york herald and he's like we need to have a inquiry into the conduct of the crew members but like nothing ever nothing happened done. but they wanted one they never got it no when it comes to that this point in terms of research and building the game so this room here is pretty detailed would you say brandon is pretty good the, oh, it's beautiful, search. beautiful. Like, 10 it's, out of 10. it's detailed. It's not too detailed where it's going to light the game. But thankfully, the location's right. We might have to sh uh, shove it back a little bit. But a lot of these rooms now that we've we had research on now, I hate to say this. I know a lot of people are going to scream at me in the comments, but we are having to redo the Arctic. Now, don't panic because it's not like, oh, it's going to take another year. No. <laughs> so a lot of this well... time, to get to this point, was me and voice at the time we have work we have school we had to attend other things like that most of the wow. time it took was actual research the starting research was the part, artist part we now we know we built we built this room built some of the cabins we built kind of the pantry and know what that instruments look like in there we have a lot of things that we know what it looks like or at least we specialize in how it might look like but it's like, um, just as a small example is most of the time the I was building on this during our uh, long few year of working on it was just optimizing what we already had mm. because we didn't know what was next. Mm. That was also I think was fighting the ink at the time. Now we have the ink V2 room. We can actually just go. All right, just go. Essentially, so that was that was a other worry during the early stages of the building. So as of right now, we are having to redo the whole Arctic. Now, all this detail is not going to be completely jeopardized and can be thrown in the trash. No. We're going to, first off, we're going to do is a complete our own deck plan outlines of how the ship we're going to do. We're going to measure everything that we know in terms of schematics. There are documents that show how things are laid out in terms of measurements, which is awesome. We'll thank Brandon for this because he's mastermind when it comes to this stuff. But pretty much, we're going to build an outline. We're going to take all these measurements of these rooms and kind of lay out how they need to be the foundation parts, I'd like to call it. Like this model here, our foundation was the lounging saloon and also the dining saloon up before a refit, essentially. Now, anchor points? Ascent, yes, anchor points. And we just kind of built out from there. But now we have a lot more of information, points. that too. More information is given to us now. We're going to put the stuff, more anchor points in. And at that point, we just build out from there, which has less spaces. Mm -hmm. Second class is probably going to be the hardest part. But knowing ships across the time it's used they're usually smaller and not as detailed so that'll be more creative licenses using other 
kind of references like how other people did it. Like I like to call these uh, why the creative called, like, liberties. Well, yes, but trends. I guess it's the trend. Oh. Yeah, that too. Trends too. But oh. it's the stuff that what yeah. other ships did over the time of that era a lot. I find out that just loons are usually always in the back. Is a thing. That, that's one of them. But there's also ships that have it in yeah. front sometimes, sometimes even both sometimes, depending on the class. Yeah, but, uh, we're in the back due to the galleries and the stern. Yeah. yeah, but like stuff like that, that's like small stuff. Like stuff that we have actually no information on. That's, that's nice. where we start kind of doing creative licenses a little bit. It's like, okay, well, we know that it's in the same class. It's not going to be as fancy as, like, say, first class or saloon class. So we can, you know, turn it down, make this room maybe smaller a little bit, and kind of go from there. But, but yeah. That's so. All right, current challenges. Some of the current challenges. So I know you two are new here. Um, you haven't actually know how Reckoning works and all that, but oh, me and these other three over here definitely know. We can definitely elaborate on that. So <laughs> challenges. We're talking about bugs Which in particular. Three? Oh, well, as well. Uh. This, this is just Rec Room as a whole, you know, you've got shifting going on constantly where you edit the game for so long that I, over time blocks, especially Tube, the stuff that we love to studio. use. Just yeah, I know. No. <laughs> just the, every, just everything just Blender. slowly shifts in and just out. It's like, yeah, but sat here Blender. right now, I can see the carpet yeah. going through the detailing. Yeah. And it's so, just, oh. Texture. Could have been a so. texture material. No. Yeah, it could have been if he did Blender, but Trim we sheets. don't know Blender because we haven't studied it because we don't have the time to do it because we got work school and all that lovely stuff. I got a, I got a certificate I need to finish, so yeah, it's kind of hard to do that. Right? It gives me it's an awesome. Oh, nice. <laughs> that's that's also another reason why you have me. Thank God you have. Yes, yeah, Studio yeah. Blender expertise. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Other challenges is stuff like you know research wise. You know, it's always it's only so little it's available to us. Jesus, man, you're eating so much chocolate. You, or are you gonna be okay? That's, you're gonna fall unconscious. Your, your glucose level is gonna go, <laughs> and they're gonna go crazy. You're gonna flip the table. You're gonna That'll pass out. Then. <laughs> Why? It's empty. See, he's already delirious. He doesn't know it's empty already. So the challenge is, you know, availability. Obviously, we kind of mentioned like school, work. Yes, it's gonna take time. But as of right now, even though we're having to redo the Arctic. We are definitely still ahead of the game because we have a lot of things already kind of planned out how things need to go. Most of the hard stuff is kind of in the past. So at this point, it's just kind of a puzzle piece. We find rooms that we know we have measurements of. We kind of figure it out where it needs to go, finalize it, build out from there, and just kind of see how things, other things fit with it. Like we know that sometimes the pantry is a, there's a kitchen and a pantry. It's almost separate. It's almost separate. It, we know it's kind of in between in a way so but we I noticed that ships sometimes have the pantry on the side so it's, it's not like in the middle of the room because in this mall we have it straight in the middle central central middle but I've seen yeah I've seen deck plans where of other ships where the pantry is just onto one side and nothing's wrong nothing's wrong with doing that it's just unique to see so like obviously availability for that research availability it's those are gonna be the challenges, but most of the research is pretty much mostly all done. At least the hard parts. We're starting to go into that creative liberty stuff in terms of just general references. Um, and at that point, we can start answering some questions from the anime <laughs> video questions now. So, yay! <laughs> okay, got some questions here. So, are you ready? So the first question. Oh no. The first one is. Well. So, this is going to be some of the silly parts of it. If some of them are going to be silly, but we're going to go for it. So, the first one is going to be from uh, Spamcan199. This is Discord. Uh, does it include Skibbity Toilet? <laughs> no! Hold on. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Anyways, next question. He needs it. Um, anyways, the next question here is from Thomas Andrews on Discord. Is When is the stress test? So, the stress test, if some people don't know, is a when we're going to test the game in a popular setting and just have the ship move and function in the in the background just to see how people feel lag wise <laughs> it's 
and all that such, yes, voice. We could even though we're obviously redoing the ship, we could still use a stress test yeah. really soon using this ship, because if we have this ship as an idea of mm -hmm. what it's like, then when we're building the next one, it gives us a bit of hindsight in where we need to be careful. Now, next question here this is going to be from Totally Fine. Uh, what is the toughest thing to research about the Arctic as of now? Um, well, that depends whether before or after you guys got here. So I want to say, so let's do two parts. Before, the biggest challenge was probably between second class or just generally how rooms look. Yeah, that. But even that. <laughs> but even like cake. small details. Like we know that skip. Yeah. Like some of the, the the design, but it's the stuff that is not. Shut up. I believe the hardest part is trying to decipher 1850, 1850 language that talks like on the lee side what what do you mean on the lee side like and then it's the old language it's the old language yeah. that's the biggest barrier that the biggest barrier. i would really agree with that it's 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 weird it's funky i mean sometimes you can kind of speculate what they're saying but like yeah. it, it, you, it's you have to think about it a little bit but, it's upsetting yeah. that when i read God, the um some of the things i understand it <laughs> i yeah. think it's just british yeah. it's me being british a lot of these stuff's are changed into like slang terms nowadays but there are some things that i understand but there are other things that it's like what mm. yeah oh yeah english oh, yeah. this is a question from j with a j if you vote on a certain setting uh will you be able to stop the ship from sinking by stern so no no the ship will sink unfortunately sad spoiler but there will be those systems like i told that i said spoiler. before is that things are like the, the pumps the manual pumps or getting the anchors off early, that based off those commands that happened historically. But if you don't do said things going off of history, the ship will sink faster, but it'll still sink the same way as it did. It's just more of a time delay to get you, like, it helps you in the long run. This would be like a timed event in terms of getting, su being surviving. Because this is not going to be Titanic Legacy. There will be swimming, there will be drowning, there will be hypothermia. There will even be, this part of the gadget system for you, Silent, is. Suction. We will have there suction will be in there the be... game. So, <laughs> suction. Yes. The suction or things you get caught on because, well, let's just say this. It's not a good idea yeah. to be on the deck and then all of a sudden be next to a grate while water's flooding around you. It's not a good idea. Yeah, it happened to me. Yeah. But, like, mm -hmm. it's not great. Um, the, the reason why they say abandon ship <laughs> when it starts to go down. So, oh. I I have some input on the the sink like preventing or delaying the sinking stuff like mm -hmm. with the pumps is with animation Gizmos V2 you can now like uh, slow down animations yeah like mm -hmm. mid animation so like you could prevent like actually prevent it if you're planning mm -hmm. space on using like CV2 animation Gizmos and CV2 state machines mm -hmm. then like that is pretty possible oh yeah oh yeah. yeah. Well, I'll still have to get some learning into it, but hey, that's the last parts and that stuff. Stay, if it's state machines, I'm good. I live off by state machines. <laughs> oh yeah. Titanic Legacy. Oh, oh, this guy. Yeah. Here. Here's this a guy. Shot. Oh, here. Yeah. Titan Legacy state machines. Here. Here's a picture of the Titan Legacy. Oh my God. I'm gonna vomit. Oh, my <laughs> People wonder why I'm not involved. Legacy is. In... What? People wonder why I'm not involved in like the main animations when it comes to these maps. Oh, because yeah. I don't know where space finishes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, voice, can you uh, animate just this part of the sinking? Yeah. Space, where is it? <laughs> <laughs> it it's what's called, and Sally knows this, it's messy organization. It's been with me since the dawn. called spaghetti circuits. That too. It's been with me since the dawn of Little Big Planet. <sighs> oh, yeah. oh, God. Yeah, I know. All right, so next one is... Uh, so Spider Boy uh, YT0166. What month do you think it might release? I'm assuming the game. Again, we don't know this time. We're gonna hope, hope, hope. Maybe by this uh, year, but I doubt it. I, it's probably somewhere maybe mid or early next year, 2024. <laughs> um, next question is from J Boy. Um, are you gonna add Dr. Pepper and Reese's back to the car? 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Yes. So, we had an Easter egg there. There will be other Easter eggs I'm not going to say yet, wink voice. But uh, <laughs> it involves a particular person that is willing to do it, and I think it's going to be kind of funny. A great guy. Oh, so oh, yeah. Can we at old. least have a Reese's Note to Pepper Easter egg in one of the cabins? Maybe. We'll see. Maybe but, like a drawer like, you can open. We're going to do it too there. much because, you know, we don't Well, I have things, a Reese's. If you guys don't know, Kian and Brendan, it's just their <laughs> Easter eggs that been kind of with us for a while, and we kind of want to hide them away somewhere. You know, games, games, so little Easter eggs in there. Oh, yeah. But there will be one, oh, yeah. I will tell you, but you'll like it. Yeah, promising. We are not rogue when it comes to just random stuff, okay? <laughs> Mo um, Moto Obo. Uh, what is the worst part of making both, especially with all that tube? Uh, making sure that tube does not shift on you uh, and, and the oh, stir yeah like oh. yes as long as you have schematics then it's fine we don't have this one but that's still good because we can still speculate and kind of get like, like we can just kind of make our own a little bit best that we can but when you have schematics oh it makes it so much better at that point it's simply just because if record wants to bug it does it bad and it just all of a sudden your tube goes Ey! and it's like well now it just doesn't look great <laughs> anymore and trust me guys you'll like since you guys are now on the project you will definitely see me in voice being angry at sometimes because building is just <laughs> not fun oh yeah oh yeah there's moments where i Man, join you guys and it's get like into it's combined, about to get you harder that combined with my poor internet you think you will you shut up about blender <laughs> <laughs> it's a world changer space you're not ready for it yeah no I want to do it though, regardless. Um, Evan Afton RR says, "Will there be music?" Yes. It's Plenty. it's even its own challenge because when you're in video production and just music and sound design, it is also very difficult. You just, you just find yourself for hours just sitting there scrolling through so much different types of music, and you just can't find any. You just can't. LV Arts says, "Will there be uh, a dock or land that the SS Cambry will drop off survivors?" Probably. I mean, we'll have to do more research on it. I can't really say yet because I need to go back in that book. I did read it once, and I just need to revisit it. But yes, because we have the ink space, there's a lot of different things we can do. There's a lot of different things. I thought about camouflaging the Arctic after it sinks. It's pretty unique. But guess what? We don't need to do that anymore. We can just make a whole new other show. <laughs> uh, and then last one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurt you, Kian. Yeah! I'm going to hurt you, Kian. Kian says, will it boat? Mm -hmm. Everyone's there. Yes, it will boat. It you will, can't it prevent will it from boat. It, it always boats. Well, it boys, boat. boys, technically, it will not become the boat. Eventually. It, it will boat. Boat plus boat, boat then equals it will... minus boat. Yeah, it <laughs> minus two boats. I'm going to give two boats. Negative boat times I'm negative boat equals positive boat. What are we talking about? That will be concluding our today's video on the second update of this game, Arctic. Um, is there anything, last things you want to say? Make it quick. Anything quick, because we're on a time, we're on a time limit here. I'm, I hope to make it look epic, because I have so many little techniques with Studio to like polish, mm -hmm. like the, the ambient, like, what is it, composition? Modeling is one thing, composition atmosphere is a different thing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, uh, and but I hope to aid in the atmosphere. And we'll get the production and the mm -hmm. composition. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> it for this video. So stay tuned. We might have another third update eventually, sometime probably next month. But um, until then, you know, we'll see you then, whether it's live stream or a video. I'll be this in everybody.